Have you ever felt like your world has been turned upside down after a breakup? A question that echoes in the quiet corners of our minds when we are left alone with our thoughts and the remnants of a love that once was. The pain of a breakup, my friends, is a universal experience, a shared human condition that unites us in our most vulnerable moments. It's like a storm that rages within us, a torrent of emotions that can be overwhelming, confusing, and at times, utterly consuming. You might find yourself grappling with feelings of sadness, anger, denial, or even relief. Your heart may feel heavy, burdened by the weight of lost dreams and shared memories. You may feel a profound sense of loss, as if a part of you has been irrevocably taken away. And let me tell you, it's perfectly normal. It's okay to feel this way. It's okay to mourn the end of a relationship, to grieve for the love that was lost. It's okay to feel lost, to wonder about the whys and the what ifs. These feelings, this pain, is a testament to your capacity to love, to feel, to connect with another human being on a deep and meaningful level. It's a testament to your humanity. We often forget that love, in all its forms, is a risk. It's a gamble we take, knowing that it might end in heartbreak. But isn't that what makes it all the more precious? The fact that we were willing to take that risk, to open our hearts and let someone in, knowing that it could all end in a heartbeat. That, my friends, is the beauty of love. So as you navigate through the storm, remember that it's okay to feel the pain, to let it wash over you. It's okay to cry, to scream, to let out all the pent-up emotions. It's okay to feel everything, or to feel nothing at all. This is your journey, your path to healing, and it's okay to take it one step at a time. It's okay to take as long as you need, to heal at your own pace. Remember it's okay to not be okay right now. Did you know that breaking up can trigger a grief response? It's true. Just like losing a loved one, a breakup can lead to profound feelings of loss and sorrow. But understanding this process can help you navigate these choppy emotional waters. Often, people think of grief as a linear journey, with clear stages that you move through one by one. This concept, first proposed by psychiatrist Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, includes five stages. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and finally acceptance. You might see these stages reflected in your own experience. Denial can look like disbelief or shock at the end of your relationship. Anger might surface as resentment towards your ex-partner, or even yourself. Bargaining could involve replaying scenarios in your head, wondering if things could have turned out differently. Depression often appears as a deep sadness and lack of interest in activities you once enjoyed. And acceptance, while it might seem far off, is the stage where you start to come to terms with the reality of your situation. But it's important to remember that grief isn't a one-size-fits-all experience. Not everyone will go through every stage, and some might experience them in a different order. You might even find yourself revisiting stages you thought you'd moved past, and that's okay. Your grief journey is unique to you. Moreover, grief isn't a process to be rushed. It's natural to want to move on quickly, to get past the pain and get back to your normal life. But it's essential to give yourself permission to grieve, to feel your feelings fully and honestly. This isn't a sign of weakness, but a testament to your strength and resilience. Remember, it's okay to ask for help. Reach out to supportive friends, family, or a mental health professional. There's no need to go through this process alone. Recognizing your grief is the first step towards healing. So take a moment to acknowledge your feelings, to understand that what you're going through is a normal response to loss. And remember, it's okay to grieve, it's okay to hurt, and most importantly, it's okay to heal. What if we told you that taking care of yourself can help you heal after a breakup? It's true. Self-care, although often overlooked, is a powerful tool for healing. It's not just about bubble baths and spa days, although those can certainly be a part of it. Self-care is about treating yourself with the same kindness and respect that you would give to a dear friend. Firstly, let's talk about physical exercise. Now, we're not suggesting you run a marathon tomorrow, but getting your body moving can do wonders for your mental health. Whether it's a brisk walk in the park, a yoga session, or a dance-off in your living room, choose a form of exercise that brings you joy. As you move, you'll release endorphins, 
those feel-good chemicals that can help lift your spirits and clear your mind. Next, let's consider your diet. It's easy to turn to comfort food in times of distress, but remember, your body needs proper nourishment to function optimally. Try to incorporate a variety of fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains into your meals. And don't forget to stay hydrated. Mindfulness is another essential aspect of self-care. It's all about being present in the moment, acknowledging your feelings without judgment. You might try meditation, deep breathing exercises, or simply sitting quietly in a peaceful spot. As you practice mindfulness, you'll find that it becomes easier to manage your emotions and maintain a balanced perspective. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out for support. Connect with loved ones who can offer a listening ear or a shoulder to lean on. If you feel overwhelmed, consider seeking professional help. Therapists and counselors are trained to provide strategies and tools to help you navigate through difficult times. Remember, self-care isn't just about pampering yourself. It's about honoring your needs and taking steps towards healing. You are worthy of care and kindness, especially from yourself. Remember, self-care isn't selfish, it's necessary. Can a breakup be a learning experience? This may sound like a strange question, but let's delve a bit deeper. When we're in the thick of heartbreak, it's tough to see anything beyond the pain. But once the acute phase subsides, we can start to examine the past, not to dwell on it, but to gain valuable insights. Let's start by acknowledging that every relationship is unique, just as every individual is unique. And each relationship, whether it ended in joy or sorrow, has something to teach us. It's almost like a mirror, reflecting back to us aspects of ourselves that we might not have noticed otherwise. Reflecting on a past relationship can help us understand our own patterns, our own needs, and our own wants. It can show us where we've grown, where we need to grow, and what we value in a relationship. It can shine a light on our strengths, and yes, our weaknesses too. But remember, this isn't about dwelling on mistakes or blaming yourself. It's about understanding, growing, and learning. It's about turning a tough experience into a stepping stone towards self-awareness and personal growth. So how do you go about this reflection? Here's a suggestion. Start by asking yourself what you loved about the relationship. What attracted you to your ex-partner? What qualities did they have that you admired? Then think about what didn't work. Were there patterns that kept repeating? Were there needs that weren't being met? And here's the most critical part. Consider what you want from future relationships. What qualities are important to you in a partner? What kind of relationship do you want to build? And most importantly, what kind of person do you want to be in that relationship? The answers to these questions can guide you as you move forward. They can help you make healthier choices, build stronger relationships, and ultimately find a love that is fulfilling and empowering. Each relationship, even those that end, can teach us valuable lessons about ourselves and what we need from a partner. So let's take these lessons, these reflections, and use them as stepping stones to a brighter, healthier future. Scene script. Are you ready to leave the pain of your breakup behind? Let's talk about how to move forward after a breakup. It may seem impossible right now, but trust me, you are stronger than you think. Firstly, it's important to set new goals for yourself. Do you remember those dreams you put on hold? Maybe you wanted to travel, learn a new language, or start your own business. Well, now is the perfect time. You have the freedom and the space to focus on yourself and what you truly want in life. Next, consider exploring new hobbies. Try something you've always been curious about, but never had the chance to do. It could be anything, painting, hiking, cooking, yoga, or even skydiving. This isn't just about keeping yourself busy, it's about opening yourself up to new experiences, new passions, and new perspectives. Strengthening relationships with friends and family is also crucial. Reach out to the people you trust and let them be there for you. Share your thoughts and feelings with them, do activities together. Remember, there is a whole world of love and support around you. And finally, give yourself permission to let go. Letting go doesn't mean forgetting or erasing the past. 
It means accepting that it happened, learning from it, and freeing yourself from its hold. You are not stuck in a moment. You are a dynamic, evolving being, capable of growth, change, and resilience. Moving forward is a journey, not a destination. It's okay to have bad days. It's okay to miss them sometimes. But keep going, keep growing, and every day you'll find yourself a little further along the path of healing. Remember, a breakup doesn't define you. You have the power to move on and create a fulfilling life for yourself. You are not the pain you've experienced. You are the strength that continues to rise from it. And in your journey of moving forward, remember to be kind, be patient, and most importantly, be hopeful.